Hi there and welcome to this video on mixed transformations. Uh, what we're trying to do here is give you uh, an overview of all the transformations and a quick recap on how you might describe them. So, first thing to do is just make sure that we're fully aware of the transformations that we're going to encounter. So at GCSE level we're looking at enlargement, reflection, rotation and translation. And they're all categorised as transformations. So I think one of the most difficult aspects students find is actually recognising which of the transformations it is. So what I've designed is a flowchart that you could use to try and um, work out which of the four transformations you're looking at. So um, I've left the actual transformations blank at the moment and I thought it'd be good for you to really think through what you think the missing transformation is in each case. I'll show you uh, the answers in a moment. So pause the video now. Here's the answers that you should have come up with. So if the shape has changed shape, uh, the size of the shape, so in any way, then it's um, some form of enlargement, whether it's been bigger or smaller. If the shape hasn't changed size, but it's moved from one position to another, but it's not been twisted or tilted, facing the other way, then it's simply a translation, and they're quite easy to spot. Now, if so far it's not changed size, and it's moved, but it's been tilted or twisted or something like that, then it's either going to be a reflection or a rotation. One of the easiest ways of deciding which of those it is, is get some tracing paper, which you can ask for in the exam, and if you trace both shapes, then um, you should be able to fold the paper so that both shapes overlap exactly. If you can do that, then it's a reflection. If you can't do that, then it's a rotation. So that may be useful for you to decide which of the transformations you'll be looking at. So here are four examples. Let's quickly talk about um, which one is which. So we're going to use that flowchart. So, um, so have any of them changed size? Let's have a look. So this one here has changed size. You can see that it's the same shape but just bigger. So this is our enlargement. So I'll talk about later on how you might describe that fully, but I just want to quickly see which one's which. Right. Um, we're looking for a shape that's just moved from one position to another without tilting or anything. So this one here, that's true. It's a translation. All that's happened is it's moved from one position to another. Right, so now this is where you probably need your tracing paper, which I can't do on here, but you'd be looking at trying to um, imagine which one, if you folded it um, after tracing, would match up exactly with the other shape. Now you probably see here, if I folded, if I trace this and then folded it across the x-axis here, this would actually go exactly onto there. So this is our reflection and this is our rotation and you may even be able to see um, how, how that's rotated. But anyway, that's just a quick guide to how you might decide what the transformation is. Now, once you've decided what the transformation is, you then have to describe it fully. And so many students lose simple marks just because they don't really know what they're supposed to be putting. So, for a translation, well, for any transformation, you need to say which one it is. So, students sometimes say it's moved with the vector or whatever, but don't actually put um, that it's a translation. So, it's crucial that you say that it's a translation. We often describe um, translations using a vector. If you're using vectors, then this tells you how many right, and this tells you how many up. If you want to say left, then you make the top number uh, a negative number, and if you want to say down, then you make the bottom number a negative number. Um, but you must include a translation and how it's moved, um, either using a vector or clearly saying how many to the right and how many up. So if it's a rotation, you must say it's rotated, it's a rotation, you must say by how much, you must say the direction in which it's rotated and the centre of that rotation. So you must put that detail in. An enlargement. So again, you must state that it's an enlargement. 
you must state what the scale factor is, how much it's been enlarged by, and you must state the center of that enlargement. If it's a reflection, you must say it's a reflection, and the line in which it's been reflected. So it's commonly going to be something like x equals a number, or y equals a number, and occasionally you might get y equals x, or y equals minus x, but I don't think you're going to get anything beyond that. So let's look at um, a couple of exam style questions. So describe fully the single transformation that maps shape P onto shape Q. Well, what you can see here is that it's going to be an enlargement. If you look at the lengths of the side, so let's look at this length here, that's two, and this is now five. So to get the scale factor, which is what we'll need, we'll need to say, what has that been times by to get five. What has two been times by to get five? And to do that, you do, if I just do a calculation here, the scale factor is the new length in Q divided by the original equivalent length, which is 2.5. So the scale factor is two and a half. So what we're saying is that this is an enlargement by a scale factor of 2.5 now, we also need to say the centre of enlargement. Now, to do this, I've just drawn some lines on. So, all I've done is joined up all the corresponding points. What I mean by that is that this point here is the equivalent of this point here in the original shape. So, I've joined those up and drawn the line through it. Likewise, at this point and this point, this point and this point, and joined up those points and extended the line beyond those points. And what you can see is they actually all meet at this point here, and that is the centre of enlargement. So the centre of enlargement is 0, 0, or the origin. So enlargement by a scale factor 2.5 with centre 0, 0. So that's how you describe fully the single transformation that maps P onto Q. Example 2. So if you look at this um, and remind yourself about the flowchart we talked about earlier, Clearly, it's not an enlargement. It's not changed size. It can't be a translation because it's not facing the same direction. So at this point, I would recommend that you get some tracing paper and trace both shapes and see whether they fold onto each other exactly. You will find that it doesn't, so it must be a rotation. Now, when it comes to rotations, um, you really need to um, think initially, is it 180 degrees? Um, because if it is, it's generally easy to spot and then you can find the center of rotation as well this one doesn't look to be 180 degrees so it's 90 degrees if it's 90 degrees a lot of students have difficulty finding the center of enlargement so there's two ways you can do that you can get some tracing paper and try different points and um, try and find the one that seems to fit for um, your particular combination of shapes that can take time and sometimes even after using time up you don't find the right one so if you just suspect that it is 90 degrees then I, sus I strongly recommend that you do the following find two points that are the same point on each of the shapes so if you think of that top right corner of P that's just here with Q so I'm going to join those two points up now I then you can use a protractor if you need to. I'm going to measure a line 45 degrees coming off that line. Now, obviously, 45 degrees could be here, or it could be there, or you could argue it's over here as well. But you should be able to see that the rotation point is going to be somewhere around here somewhere. So what I'm going to do is draw a 45 degree line coming off this point here. And I'm going to do the same for the other end of the line. just there. So I've actually made an isosceles triangle, 45 degrees, 45 degrees, which means that the missing angle in our isosceles triangle is 90 degrees. So this here is 90 degrees and that means we found our center of rotation, which is just there. So we've now got to describe the single transformation that maps P onto shape Q. So you must say it's a rotation and you must say it's about the point one one, the center of rotation by 90 degrees and if it's gone from there to there then it's clockwise so you need to say that it's actually gone in a clockwise direction 
So they're the things that you need to write down to fully describe that transformation. Example three. Well, you can see that I've uh, just marked a point here and here. Because simply what's happened here is the shape has moved from one position to the next and it's not been tilted, it's not um, changed direction, anything like that. It's just been slid from one position to another. Now, it's easy to consider one point. So look at this point here. It's gone one, two, three, four, five, six to the right and one down. So it's a translation, so you must say that by the vector so it's 6 to the right and 1 down so it's negative 1 so every single point on this triangle has moved by that amount just check here 1 2 3 4 5 6 1 down so it doesn't matter which point you choose as long as you choose two points that match up example 4 so with example 4 Definitely not an enlargement, they're not changed in size. Um, not a translation because it's not facing the same way. So again, get your tracing paper, see if it folds over. And you will find that this one does and you'll get the crease for the fold being along this line here. So if I can just add that in. So that's the line in which this has been reflected. So we say that this one is a reflection in the line and this line, if you look at all the points, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, and so on, all the y and the x coordinates are the same. So this is the line y equals x. So it's a reflection in the line y equals x. Okay, well, I hope that's helped.